Hey guys, how are we doing? Welcome to a news update here on Buzzing Pattaya. And uh, wow, what a week we've had. Uh, obviously the most noticeable thing that's changed is the relaxation of the masks mandate, uh, which is fantastic. Finally, we are taking a step forward and uh, long may it continue. It's still a little bit uncertain out there. There's a lot of people still wearing masks, even outside in the public place. So I guess it's gonna take a little while for us to get used to the fact that we don't actually have to wear them. Uh, there are still some places here so it's always best to keep one in your pocket just in case, because if you go into some of the big shopping malls, uh, places like that, you are gonna need to wear a mask at this moment in time. However, fingers crossed if things progress and uh, you know lots of changes ahead, then who knows, maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to put that to one side. All right, so this week, uh, there's lots going on. I'm gonna put the overlays over the top so you don't have to look at me while I'm chatting away. Um, I'll get a bit of a mixed reaction on this one. And again, I'd like to ask your, your feedback, please, guys. Is it good to, for me to put the overlays over the top or would you rather I just sit here uh, and update you based on what the news is for the week? All right, so in this case, we're gonna put the overlays on, so let's put them up now. Okay, so uh, there's been quite a lot of things going on this week, there really has, and uh, one of the things that's been noticeably a discussion point over the last couple of months is obviously the, re the uh, relaxation here in the laws of uh, cannabis and hemp. Uh, however, there are quite a few people issuing warnings at the moment. So like, for instance, in the uh, South Korea, the Thai embassy is warning Thai travelers not to carry cannabis and hemp to the country. And that if they do, violators could be prosecuted according to the South Korean regulations uh, and could face imprisonment, deportation and hefty punishment uh, as a travel ban. So there still seems to be a lot of uncertainty about this. Truthfully, it's not my kind of thing, so I don't really know much about it. I'm, I've been out there talking to people. I wanna try and get someone that knows more about it than me, which is pretty much everyone, uh, but I wanna get someone that's in authority that can talk about it and actually come on the channel and say, right, this is where we are with things. This is what the score is, and you've gotta follow these rules and regulations. But like I say, guys, truthfully, um, I've never ever partaken in this kind of thing. Nothing against those of you that do, it's just it's not my bag. Uh, so I don't really know what's going on in terms of what you can and can't do. And people are saying, oh, it's not the real thing. And you know, when you go to these, uh, there's loads, loads of these uh, new cafe stroke sort of um, drink shops appearing in, in the city now, uh, offering this kind of stuff. But people are saying to me, oh, it's not the real thing. It's, it's a minuscule amount. It doesn't really make any difference. It's more of a gimmick. Like I say, I don't know guys, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, is it a good step for the country? Is it a bad step? Where do you stand in this? I honestly don't know. Now, uh, obviously we know here in uh, Thailand, and in, in, in Pattaya in particular, we do have a lot of lady boys, uh, transgenders. And recently, very, very recently, uh, there was a new competition, well not a new competition, there was a Miss International Queen 2022, and uh, that was won by a Filipina called Fusha Ann Ravina, a uh, 27-year-old uh, business owner, and uh, she beat 22 other girls. But the reason why I brought this onto the news here is because she says one thing in a, in a statement, and it's one thing I think is very, very powerful. And she said, my first message to everyone is to spread love and peace and unity, because that is the most important thing that we do. We live under the same sky and we breathe the same air. And the reason why I wanna just bring that onto the news is it's quite relevant to coming out here, particularly if you've never experienced the ladyboy scene before. What I would say, guys, is when you do come out here, you know, stay calm, stay relaxed, be polite, and just, you know, if it's not your cup of tea, if it's not for you, then just walk through and carry on going, don't worry. Uh, but certainly don't get aggressive or don't get in, uh, animated uh, because these things can quickly cascade into a situation you don't want them to be. So just be polite, say, I'm okay, thank you very much, and just keep walking. In all the 10 years I've been here, uh, I've had many, many interactions uh, where the lady boys have come up and said hello to me and you know, trying to stop me in the street and stuff like that. And as I say, you just be polite, say, I'm okay, thank you very much, and just keep walking. Don't worry about it. You're not gonna get uh, headlocked and uh, dragged into a situation maybe you don't wanna be in. This one really worries me. I don't like this at all, I've gotta be honest with you. It's something that really does uh, upset me. So very, very recently at the Bangkok airport, uh, they found and discovered, would you believe that they found and discovered over 109 animals trying to be smuggled out of the country? Uh, they arrested two ladies, uh, a girl, a lady called Nitha Raja, 
and Zakia Sultana Ibrahim. Uh, they're both young, one was 24, one was 38, and they were preparing to board a flight to Chennai in India. Uh, the, the two Indian ladies were basically smuggling, uh, what, what they say on the news here, they said it was uh, two white porcupines, two armadillos, 35 turtles, 50 lizards, and 20 snakes in the baggage. I mean, seriously, what is that all about? That is just absolutely crazy. And I just don't get it. You know, obviously, I appreciate there's a monetary value to the animals. But, you know, where, where do they get this logic from? Let's stick a live animal inside a suitcase, throw it into the hold. I mean, and, and also as well, think about the other side again. We know, and, and I'm sure you guys have experienced it when you've got your hold luggage and it's, and it's come back out. Maybe it's been slightly damaged. You know, they don't get like very gently handled around. You know, they get tossed around like they're like footballs. So again, you know, it must be a horrific experience for the animals. And uh, you know, I just, I really, really just don't get why people do this. It really does blow my mind. And they've been arrested. And quite frankly, I hope they throw the book at them. I'm not quite sure what the penalties will be. Uh, the women were charged with violating the Wildlife Conservation and Protection Act of 2019. Uh, and also the Animal Disease Act of 2015. So I'm not sure what that's going to do in terms of what the punishment for that is, uh, but I do hope, in all fairness, I really do generally hope that they throw the book at them and that uh, you know they, they get taught a very stern lesson because, quite frankly, to put a live animal inside a suitcase and uh, to allow it to be thrown around in, in the uh, back of the airport, to be chucked onto an aeroplane and hopefully be alive when it gets to the other end, quite frankly, is despicable. But uh, anyway, so yeah, so that's what's happened. Uh, now, Phuket Immigration, uh, they've been hot on the heels. Well, they seem to be in the, in the news quite a lot lately. Uh, there's, an, uh, there's a visa extension scam going on at the moment. And uh, it's quite worrying. More than 60 foreigners have been left in the lurch by a visa service company taking money from them. Uh, and a lot of these people have not had their visas extended. And what they reported was says, uh, some of the foreigners have been waiting for more than three months. Uh, Kim Shanti reported. Uh, now, what they're saying is that a lot of these guys have not come forward because uh, circumstances, maybe, just maybe, and you know what I'm going to say, uh, maybe that their extension perhaps doesn't uh, tick all the correct boxes, hence why they've gone to this agency. But the point being is that the agency has now since disappeared. Uh, they've not replied, people have lost their passports, all kinds of situations have gone on. And when you're talking about visa extensions, you know, it's very, very important. This is an incredibly important document that you need to keep hold of at all times. And it doesn't matter what people say to you, you know, who people befriend you, say, oh, I can help you, I can sort you out. At the end of the day, that document is vital to your stay here in Thailand. I've made very, very clear that there are two people here that I strongly recommend that over the 10 years I've been here, I've always provided a very thorough and very professional service. And that is Darren at Key Visa Thailand. And if you look in the, uh, in the description of the email below, if you do want any information there, uh, I'll put his email in there for you. You know, Darren's been here a long, long time, much longer than me, and has always provided a very thorough, very professional service, and has a very good reputation here in the city. So if you are looking for uh, more complex, would I say, more complex uh, things in terms of visas and, and uh, all those all those issues. Speak to Darren, he's a very, very good guy. And also go to Soy 13.2 on Beach Road, uh, second row. Go down and see Manny Rat Services, very, very good service. They speak fluent English and they provide an exceptionally good service. You know, if you want to renew your 90 days, literally you pop, pop the passport in in the morning and then you can go back late in the afternoon or the next day and it'll be there waiting for you. So again, you know, these are two businesses that I know and I've dealt with both of them in the past. They've been extremely professional and uh, I know many, many people from the channel have gone to these people and they've had a fantastic service. So be very, very careful, guys. You know, there's always going to be someone who says, yeah, I can help you out. I can take care of that. But really, is it worth it? This is an incredibly important document. Some of these people have lost their, their passport altogether now. So now they're going to have to go through what a painstaking process that is. So yeah, be very, very careful, guys. Now, good news, good news at long last. Uh, it seems that the Thai Airways now are ready to welcome uh, the return of Chinese tourists after the Thai Airlines were allowed to resume operating two flights uh, between the countries. Now, what they're saying here is because of the ease of the travel restrictions, uh, basically because it's a good sign, they're now gonna allow people to come in from China and they have to fit two criteria, and that is they need to be either business people 
or they need to be students. Um, but it's believed that Beijing will gradually reopen more international flights for the general population. So we are taking a step in the right direction in terms of reopening airlines and allowing people to travel, which is great news. It's good, you know, I go out on the streets, I walk around and you can see there's now a, a much better vibe in the street. There's a lot more people coming over. Of course, of course, it's absolutely nothing like what it has been in the past in our, in our history. Um, but nevertheless, it is a big step forward. And that kind of situation is one that we've got to embrace and that we've got to be you know, thinking fantastic. You know, They're going to allow more people to come in. They're going to allow the Chinese to come over. So I'm guessing now we'll start to see the coaches everywhere. Who remembers the coaches? Oh, man. I've got to say that's one part of, uh, of, the, of the clampdown that I don't miss is used to ride, particularly up by Bally High Pier. There would be row after row after row after row of big coaches all trying to plow their way through the city centre. It was just carnage. Uh, but I guess, I guess uh, in the near future that that may well return. So uh, if you are wanting a coach-free experience, now's the time to get over. Get yourself out here while you can because I'm sure in the not too distant future we will go back to having all the coaches roaming around the city. Now, you don't often get this. You don't often get this. Now, I was looking through the news, and in the, uh, what is it called? The PuketNews.com. Uh, a parking spat ends with tyres slashed. Now, you know, back in when I was in England, we used to have road rage. I'm sure you guys have it over in wherever you are in the world. But out here, ironically, out here, even though this is probably the worst country I've ever been to with regards to driving standards, and how people navigate themselves around the roads. There seems to be, ironically, almost zero road rage, which is really quite strange because you can go down the roads here, you know, you can be happily minding your own business and a car will just cut you straight up, a motorbike will do a U-turn right in front of you, a lorry will cut across the road and, and just block the whole road with giving you like next to no time to stop. It really is very, very dangerous. But yet even so, having said that, there is very, very little road rage. And what's happened here is a dispute over a man parking too close to another car in front of a restaurant uh, on the Kalim beachfront last week uh, ended with one man's tires being slashed. And what it reported was that basically one guy's parked his car too close to another car. Uh, the guy wouldn't move his car. The other guy couldn't get out. So instead of just uh, trying to deal with it, he wandered off, came back with a knife and slashed the guy's tires. Uh, now the police were involved, they came down and tried to sort the situation out. No charges were pressed and uh, both guys agreed just to leave it where it was and the other guy had to pay a thousand baht uh, for the tires. But it's really strange because, you know, I don't know what, what it's like wherever you are in the world. I can only go back to being in England. We had a really bad, oh, good couple of years where we had real bad road rage incidents and um, I don't know if it still continues nowadays. Uh, like I said, I've lost kind of touch with England, so I'm not really sure where it is in terms of that kind of things. But it used to be very, very uh, prominent. It was a very regular occurrence where people would just get out of the car and start having it out with each other. So I don't know, does it still happen? It, you know, do you still get road rage incidents back in your country? I don't know, but out here, ironically, I, I think maybe people just laugh in their head rather than get angry because they think, my Lord, did you just do that? And it's more of a comical scenario rather than an angry situation. Is they going, what are you doing, you idiot? You know, but oh, honest to God, it's, it's just crazy. But the driving out here, guys, my message to you is if you are not uh, needing to drive, if it's not essential, then please try not to drive because honestly, it is a different cup of tea out here than what you're going to experience back in your home country. Talking about uh, uh, situations that have gone pear-shaped, so in the Bangkok Post, uh, there was a, another one where basically a tour company has been offering tickets, uh, they've been uh, selling tickets, and victims of a fake travel voucher program uh, have come to the Central Investigation Bureau, the CIB, and uh, what they're doing is they're asking them to get involved. Over 60 people have been out there buying tickets and uh, sadly when they've gone to redeem the tickets in the tour uh, place that they bought them for, uh, they're being turned away. And uh, the tour company's still there but they're just refusing to answer, they're not responding. And so basically they've gone to the CIB to say, look, can you have a look at this for us please? And uh, can you get involved? And they were selling tickets for all kinds of different things like five star services for villas, uh, for restaurants, squid fishing trips, uh, and sightseeing spots in Patea. And of course, 
you know, what I would suggest you do, guys, is 99% of the time, if you're gonna go to somewhere, just go and buy your ticket on the door. You might pay an extra 100 baht, whatever it will be, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, at least you have the safety and knowledge that when you do go there, you're gonna go through the door and enjoy your day rather than what's happened here where people have bought tickets and uh, sadly the tickets have not been honored and they've ended up being turned away from the venue to then go back to the said tour company and nothing's happening. And you know, out here we do have a few uh, places where you can walk around and you can go into a shop and they will sell you a ticket. They will get, they, they'll give you a ticket price but they make their money on the commission obviously. But you know, for a lot of these places, if you're gonna to go to like the, the, the Patea Floating Market or any of the SeaWorld attractions, or all of those kind of places, you know, the Million, the million Years Stone Park, Nong Nu, all these kind of places, you can just walk through the door, guys. You don't need to pre-book. Even the water parks here, you know, if you go down to some of our water parks, you can go in there, you don't need to pre-book a ticket. Uh, it really isn't essential. It might be convenient for you at that moment in time, but it's not an essential aspect of what you need to do in order to gain access. All right, so that's it for me this week, uh, just bringing you up to speed. I'm gonna continue this uh, on a Monday on a, on a weekly basis. I think it's quite good. I enjoy it, keeps me up to date on so many things that I just literally don't have the time to look at, but now I'm being forced to sit here and, and uh, do some research. It's quite weird what's going on out there, you know, it's amazing. You can live under this little cocoon in your little bubble and uh, let life pass you by. And before you know it, things have changed. And uh, talking of changes, if you saw the video I made out the other week, uh, look at the walking street. Look at what they're doing in walking street. Remember the schematic where they said we're gonna make this new pathway and they're gonna make it look all fancy and all dandy. They're doing it guys, they are actually doing it. Have a look at the video, uh, you can see it there. They're block paving away in this incredible heat right now and it is very hot at the moment, uh, but they are actually doing what they say they are going to do. Where does that leave the Agogos and the nightlife in Walking Street? Man, that's a good question. That's a good question. They've, they've taken the first step by changing the, the, uh, the way it looks. So with a nice fancy new look, will they say, say to the Agogos, listen guys, we don't really want you to be here. We would rather it be like posh restaurants and nice nightclubs and things like that. I don't know. What do you guys think? Where do you think the future of Walking Street stands uh, with all the changes? that are coming this way. And you know, around the city at the moment, I'm, I'm doing a lot of walkabout videos, which is great fun. But I've got to say, there is just so much work going on here. Literally, you go over to Second Road, they're digging the whole of Second Road up, they're making massive changes in there. If you go in at the Soy Cow, there's changes going on there. You go up to Third Road, there's lots of construction going on up there. There really is so much going on here. It's very, very hard to keep up with all the things that are happening. So clearly, the city is undergoing huge changes right now. And I guess when you come out here, if you haven't been able to get out here in the last two years, which I guess is most of you, uh, you are gonna come over and you are gonna walk into some interesting changes and you're gonna be going, wow, look at this, look at this. So uh, yeah, all good. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much. Like I say, please just let me know about the overlays. Is it working, not working? What do you think? Let me know, because then I can uh, change it around accordingly. Okay, thank you very much for watching. As always, please remember, hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon if you'd like to be notified when I bring out a new video. Get yourself on Discord, over 16 and a half thousand members now. Uh, it's completely free of charge, doesn't cost you a single penny. Get on there, you can interact with people, uh, you can share your knowledge, share your experience. It really is a fantastic platform and the link is down below. And if you'd like to support the channel, and the work that I do here, uh, there is a link to our members area down below and membership starts from as little as 89 pence a month. All right, thank you very much for watching guys and please, as always, wherever you are in the world, stay safe.